What's going on, all you 90s book enthusiasts? We're talking about a new Netflix show that just premiered this past Friday. We're talking about Mike Flanagan's new show, The Midnight Club. Adapted from the 1994 book series by Christopher Pike, but that most of us growing up back then was our gateway into horror. And this time he adapted, or Mike Flanagan adapted for the small screen with the Netflix series. Uh, can't say enough good things about Mike Flanagan. You know, the, the new king of horror, always putting out solid movies and TV shows, um, you know, on Netflix or, you know, the big screen or whatever. Dr. Sleep, and then he had Haunting of Hill House, Haunting of Bly Manor, Midnight Mass, Gerald's Game, you know, list goes on and on. This dude knows what he's doing. This time around, adapting this from the Christopher Pike novels, we have the story of the Midnight Club, which is eight terminally ill patients at Bright Cliff uh, Hospice who get together at midnight and tell spooky ghost stories, much like Are You Afraid of the Dark back then, but with a newer more twist to it yeah much more dramatic twist to it feels you know really you know we're dealing with some tough issues here death and mortality and young people dying specifically they all have terminal illnesses but there's their stories about this bright cliff manner of people you know miraculously uh, all of a sudden becoming fine and being able to go home so that's always at the backdrop of the the story here but a lot of the action deals with these kids getting together like you mentioned and each telling stories um one of the problems for the show for me that I noticed, not that it's a huge problem, but it's it's kind of hard to follow at times because they'll be telling a story at the top of the episode and, you know, it's a totally different time period. The characters are, you know, supposed to be totally different people, you know, and not know each other. So you get all these interconnected characters that are at Brightcliff, but they're all different people like throughout each episode. So it's, so it's kind of hard to follow like what's going on in reality here at Brightcliff and what's part of the story and remembering everybody's relationships like, oh yeah, they don't really know each other outside of this. That was just part of the story. So that was, for me, it kind of threw me off a little trying to keep, you know, keep everything together in my head. Like, okay, this is what's happening here. But at the end of each episode, there's always something that uh, kind of uh, teases something evil happening at this uh, this Brightcliff Manor and the kids trying to find out the answers. And uh, there's kind of a mystery um, on the other side of this too. And it's definitely worth mentioning that we see Freddie's final girl, Heather Langdenkamp, um, as the like the psychiatrist um, at this at this place. And she talks to all the kids and you know, they tell her how they're feeling. And you know, it's kind of a place where these kids are getting together. And even though they know their fate. They're going to live up their last days. They're going to live it up. They're working together and trying to stay positive through, you know, obviously being terminal and only having so much longer to live. So they're really trying to meet each other and really know each other and form these bonds that are going to, you know, take them to the other side, basically. Yeah. They know where this is going to end. So that's all they have to live by right now. Um, Cause they know their days are, are pretty short. So they get together, form this friendship, tell these really cool stories Sometimes they kind of finish their, each other's stories, but it really, you know, shows all these characters and these situations and, and spooky stories and having Mike Flanagan's ghosts and ghouls kind of showing up in the background. A few episodes that looked really cool yeah. and spooky, yeah. you know, them. but it did also, I did also get lost, uh, you know, with everything going on in the episode. Sometimes you're not really sure if it's happening in the re real world or if it's in the story. Uh, you get kind of lost in the shuffle, especially towards the middle. But, uh, you know, towards the end, it kind of finds its footing a little better. It moves some things out with these characters. But, yeah, I liked a lot of them. Alonka, you know, Kevin, Anya, Sandra, Spencer, they're all really good characters in this. A lot of unknowns. Mike Flanagan's known for using a lot of the same actors and actresses. There is, you know, some smaller parts like Henry Thomas and some other people that show up along the way. But this is more of a focal point on the youth behind me all the kids dealing with terminal illnesses going to this place to hopefully get cured and go outside of this facility, this huge, beautiful mansion, getting out and living a normal life again. Yeah. The, it's a main showcase for these young actresses and actors. My favorite is Anya. Um, you know, she's in a wheelchair for most of it. I feel like she has the most to do along with a couple of the other characters, but she really impressed me uh, being a young actor up and coming uh, Ruth Codd is uh, her name, the actress's name that plays her. 
Um, She's a TikToker. Also, oh, really? I didn't even know that. Wow. TikToker. Yeah. That's impressive. Yeah. She really did a good job. Uh, and then Alanka, she really does a great job. I've seen her before in a couple other projects. Yeah. She, all these kids are really good. You know, none of them feel out of place or anything. Um, Amesh, he's good too. I, I really like everybody, but it's just kind of hard to follow. There's too much going on in some of these episodes. It's like, where's the focus? Let's find out what's going on behind Brightcliff here. Let's not, you know, go in and out of different periods of times and stuff. So other than that, I had a good time with it. I love how it looks. It looks like a Mike uh, Flanagan, you know, work. And, uh, you know, he has this whole Flanaverse, like you mentioned at Netflix. This is just the latest entry. And he, you know, went a little, obviously, young adult being a Christopher Pike novel, young adult novel. Um, so didn't have the same effect as, you know, Haunting a Hill House and Midnight Mass. Um, he didn't direct all the episodes. He directed a couple, but it's still better than most, you know, shows you're going to watch on Netflix. It's definitely worth your time. I'd say it was never hard to watch the episodes, just a little hard to follow, but by the end, they always keep you kind of hanging on into the next one. You want to find out more, like you mentioned, you know, the ghosts and ghouls come out and there's some pretty good jump scares along the way. I feel like Mike Flanagan does really well with jump scares where they're overplayed in other movies. He really knows how to like make it scary when it happens. Like I jumped a couple of times <laughs> during some of these episodes. Same here. He really knows how to bring the suspense and that's what he's the king of really, you know, solid script, you know, great direction in this directing cinematography, set design, the cast is good. Just felt like they stuffed in too much. You know, they, they should have been a little lighter on that and kind of push that maybe into another season. I'm not sure if it got green lit yet, but it just felt like there's too much going on. And certain episodes towards the middle kind of lost me for a little bit and then kind of ironed all the, all of those issues out. But um, I think they should have just left out a few little things out of this and have been easier to follow because you get lost in the shuffle with, you know, the stories they're telling and what's going on in this facility. And huge fan of the, the Christopher Pike novel, huge fan of Mike Flanagan. I love his universe, love the cameos, the people that show up. Heather Lang in camp, old Nancy. Final girl showing up as a character, the doctor that you were talking about, Georgina Stanton, she was really fantastic and kind of leads up towards the end with her character too, without giving too much away. And, uh, you know, definitely this is a good spooky show to watch during the Halloween season, especially for 31 days of horror. So that being said, I'm giving Mike Flanagan's The Midnight Club a three and a half out of five. I'm in beds and air pieces. <laughs> Mike Flanagan returns again for the 31 days of horror. I'm happy about it. I, anytime he gets a chance to do something new, I'm excited about it and was excited about this. And, uh, you know, I liked what I saw for the most part. Wasn't as good as his older works, but still felt, you know, something new and refreshing and an interesting take on an old, you know, 90s novels that we used to read back in the day. So with that being said, I'm going to give Mike Flanagan's The Midnight Club, now streaming on Netflix, a three and a half out of five Anya hair pieces. Whoa. So thank you guys so much for following along with us as we reviewed Mike Flanagan's The Midnight Club on Netflix. 10 episodes, it's streaming now. Uh, doing pretty good. It's in the top 10 on Netflix. So a lot of people are checking it out and uh, we both recommend that you guys check it out too. And we can't wait for Mike Flanagan's next title. What's that going to be, Logan? Well, the House of Usher, that comes out next year but with old Kate Siegel, his wife. So I'm um, awesome. Yeah. It's a, a character from this uh, show as well is going to be, and I'm sure some more of actors, actresses he uses in his other works are going to be showing up. I'm very excited for that. Uh, love the movie of Vincent Price as well. Definitely another movie you should check out during the Halloween season. It's spooky. Spooky. It's spooky season. We're rolling right along. Can't wait to review more TV shows and movies this 31 Days of Horror. So until the next 31 Days of Horror movie and TV review, I'm Uncle Henry. And I'm Uncle Mike Flanagan. Cheese!